Well, good morning. It's Pastor Rob, and I uh, apologize once again for the way this message is actually being communicated today. Um, I said on my video for this week that um, I was not feeling um, very well earlier this week, had another COVID test, and that came back negative again, so praise God for that. So, But because of that, um, I was not able to record the service as we do on Thursday evenings, and so unfortunately, I am having to give the sermon to you in this manner today, but uh, praise God that we actually have technology to be able to move forward in this direction and that you can still hear the message, even though that's the case. I, I pray that um, you stay safe, but I also pray that um, over the next few, few weeks that I'm able to um, get back on track again and not have any COVID scares and, and uh, be at the service on Sunday to record for um, Christmas Eve, but also to be at the Christmas Eve service as well. So if you could keep that in your prayers, I would greatly appreciate it. And, you know, it just sort of ties in perfectly with sort of what we're going through right now with this whole idea of crisis It seems like to me, especially because of this COVID situation with my life, is that it's been one crisis after another. And I know 2020 has sort of been that way for all of us. But what we've been doing is going back to that first century church and actually looking at that first century sort of experience of, of the first Christmas and see the crisis that was happening there, that we see Elizabeth and Mary finding themselves in crisis together. And they are able to share some wisdom and perspective to us as we look at what they did and how they sort of reacted to this situation. So today, I hope that you glean a little bit more on this great story that we can hear and learn some more on how we react when crisis comes our way. Now, the amazing thing is, as I think about this, I can't help but think about positivity. Now, I don't know about you, but when someone is overly positive, sometimes that can be extremely annoying. I think you know what I mean. I mean, when we are maybe in a crisis or in a bad situation, or maybe we feel sad or scared, sometimes we don't want someone to be positive with us. Really what we want is someone to hear us, someone to see us, and someone to understand what we are feeling and what we are going through. What we don't need sometimes is someone telling us how positive things are and how great things are going to be. You know, that's the hard thing is that sometimes people do that. Now, they mean very well when they do that. They, they are just trying to encourage us and they mean all the love in the world to do that. That's just sort of a natural thing for people to do. But if you're like me, sometimes we just want people to hear us and understand us for the way that we're feeling right now. Now, I know many of you have probably experienced this in some way. When you feel bad, when, when other people are around you, that you don't want them to feel bad, but you want them to understand the way you're feeling. And just a little bit of us, though, probably sits there and says, you know what, I would like to be a little bit more like them. I'd like to have some of that possibility, that positivity. That you and I, we don't want to fake it at all. We, we don't want to act like we're positive when we're not. But we want to be genuine. And it's possible. Is it possible at all to have a better attitude in moments of crisis in our lives? You know, that's what we're talking about as we talk about this crisis miss. And what I really come to more and more is the idea that you and I, we actually need a stable Christmas. And so what I really pray you do is you, uh, you join us for our Christmas services that are coming up on Christmas Eve. On 1224, we're going to have a 6 p.m. service right in our parking lot at Our Saviors. It's going to be outdoors, and we are going to be worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ as he comes to us uh, once again. And we thank him for, for being able to let us celebrate this Christmas this year. Even though it's outside, I think it's going to be a great environment. We're going to sing some of our traditional hymns and, and songs with our praise team. You're going to hear a message about a stable Christmas. This is something you and I and all of us need during this time of instability. And we have just have an opportunity to come together. We'll be having masks and we'll be social distancing and doing everything that we need to do to keep it safe. But still, I encourage you to come and worship with us on Christmas Eve because we all need a stable Christmas. See, in crisis, the amazing thing is it becomes easy for crisis to rob us of joy and peace. Now, 
I hope that during this time of the year, you're still able to find joy and peace. And, and that's what we hope we can do on Christmas Eve, is come together for a time where we can actually put all of this in perspective and understand where our stability comes from. And, and through that, we can feel joy and peace. But the question today is, is it possible to have a good attitude even in the midst of crisis? Now, as I say that, it's interesting because what happens in crisis is sometimes the lie that crisis tells us is that we are seeing the whole picture, that there's no hope and that everything you see out there will fall apart and it just will never get better. Some people are expressing that that's where we're at right now. And that the only sort of logical response in crisis is sometimes to get angry and just throw in the towel. But see, we, we aren't seeing the full picture. And what I hope you're looking at on the screen is a picture that, that you're not seeing the whole picture right now, I guarantee you. Some of you are looking at this picture and you're seeing a beautiful young woman with a hat. Others of you are looking at this picture and you're seeing an old lady. See, sometimes in crisis, we are deceived to think that we see the full picture, but we don't actually see it all. There's much more that is going on in crisis than what you and I see. And just like in this picture, if you see the old lady, great. If you see the young woman, great. But what you're not seeing is you're not seeing both. And I encourage you to look at this a little bit longer. I'll give you just a few moments and try to find out sort of what the, the, the young woman looks like and what the old lady looks like. Just to give you a little hint, this right here is the hat of the young woman with this being a feather out of the hat. This is the young woman's nose and this is the young woman's face and chin right here. But if you see an old woman, here's what you see as well. You see that this is the old woman's eye. This becomes the wood, old woman's nose. And this is the old woman's sort of mouth and chin down below covered by a scarf all above her head. See, sometimes we see things and we, we think we see things as they are, but actually we realize that there is so much more behind the scenes that you and I actually are not seeing the full picture. See, the amazing thing is that Mary heard the news of the angel. She pushed back against that news and still isn't fully convinced that it's all going to be okay. And she also wonders, is she just being crazy hearing this news? She goes and does further research and notice that, that this is interesting. Mary continues to be curious. She continues to, to be curious on what all of this means. It says she ponders this in her heart. And what if you and I were that way in crisis? What if instead of allowing us to think that we see the whole picture and that this crisis controls our attitude, that we curiously say, I haven't figured it out yet? What if, what if we were more curious during times of crisis? Now, Here's a picture that I think you're probably going to laugh at, but this is Curious George, and this was one of my favorite characters as I grew up, as I, as I read children's books and I saw Curious George on TV with my kids as well. I always loved Curious George. Now, why I loved Curious George was because of the fact that he was the one who always sort of got into crisis and trouble situations. But that's because as he went through life, he was more and more curious. And even when he was in a crisis, when he was in trouble, he was still even more curious and wanted to find out more and more. But during that whole time, if you notice how he typically reacted, he reacted with that smile you see on his face. He always was happy. He always was joyous. And he always was curious, trying to figure out more. Now, what if you and I were that way, that when we face trouble, when we face crisis, that we just like Mary and just like Curious George, we actually went into it with a curious attitude of saying, I'm not seeing the full picture. I wanna see more and I wanna understand this more. I haven't figured it out yet. So let's be more curious about what's going on. See, this is sort of what Curious George did. This is really what Mary did as well as she was curious to find out more. But I think it's something that's interesting for us that when we find ourselves in crisis, sometimes we can close in those walls, as I said last week, we can find ourselves boxed in and think that we only see what's around us and that that's reality. But it, there is so much more and usually it is something that is much larger than what we see. 
Today, we're going to look back again at the scripture from Luke chapter 1, where we read these verses from 39 through 45. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judea. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in your, my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. I love this text because it, there's so much that we can get at here. But this picture sort of captures everything that's happening. I mean, here we see that, that when she greets Elizabeth, when Mary greets Elizabeth, something amazing happens. Elizabeth sees something totally different. She sees the hand of God right in that situation. Elizabeth recognizes that Mary was carrying the, a child who was the Lord. Now, think about that just for a moment. She recognizes that right away. This knowledge is, is only something that could have come from the Holy Spirit as the Spirit revealed that to her. And even more remarkable is what happens next, is that through this then, because baby John recognizes who is right there present in Mary, the baby John reacts. She sees the baby kick, and they end up talking about this. See, God's spirit here, it sort of shows us and tells us, is not limited by age, gender, or sort of the socioeconomic status of people. That he is poured out for all people according to God's good and gracious will of God. That we, we can go through crisis, but as we heard last week, we are not meant to go through it alone. We see this modeled right here as Mary and Elizabeth both have their own crisis situations, and they come together to share in this time and give hope and promise to each other, because here is the Savior, and they know now that what the Lord has done is good and gracious. And so they are here together walking through this crisis right now, knowing that each one of them is not alone. See, this is an amazing thing because what we see is ultimately Mary is moved by the Holy Spirit. She's moved by the Holy Spirit to allow God to shape her thoughts. She's moved by the Holy Spirit because of God's promises that they trump what she sees, that she knows that all the promises that she's heard for years, that those are stronger than the things that she sees going around her in this time of crisis. Also, that God's goodness throughout history is what Mary considers certain in this uncertain situation, that during this time of uncertainty, she knows she can trust in the goodness of God because of the history that God has shown. And it comes out in absolute praise of God. That what Mary does is she goes into this sort of praising of God of what everything means. And so she goes and from Luke chapter 1, 46 through 51, we hear these magnificent words from Mary as she says this in our text. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. See, all the things that Mary praises for God for, all the things that we hear her praising in this great words that she speaks and sings, is that mercy, remembering his people, 
And God being close to the brokenhearted is something that she's praising him for. Those are the words that she spoke. And all of those things are personified in this Savior, this Messiah, Jesus Christ. It's personified not just for Mary, but through Jesus. This is something that is personified and given to you and me as well. It's important that we realize this, that all Mary is praising God for right here is also what we praise him for as well, because all that is there in Jesus is also there for you and I. It's interesting because sometimes when we, when we hear this and we think about this, it doesn't happen for you and I. Sometimes we get so caught up in this world and we get so pulled into the, the things that are happening all around us that we can forget about how great and glorious God is. C.S. Lewis actually wrote um, something that I thought was very good, and it's from The Problem of Pain. And here's what he wrote. He said, my own experience is something like this. I am progressing alone the path of life in my ordinary, contentedly fallen and godless condition, absorbed in a merry meeting with my friends for the marrow or a bit of work that tickles my vanity when suddenly a stab of abdomen pain that threatens serious disease or a headline in the newspaper that threatens us all with destruction sends this whole pack of cards tumbling down. At first I am overwhelmed and all my little happiness looks like broken toys. Then slowly and reluctantly bit by bit, I try to bring myself into the frame of mind that I should be at all times and perhaps by God's grace, I succeed and for a day or two become a creature consciously dependent on God and drawing its strength from the right sources. I love that because it talks about the fact that we get so caught up in all the things of this world. When we look at crisis, we focus on crisis, but we aren't seeing the whole picture. And at times we can get pulled away to where we aren't relying on God as we probably need to be each and every day. But it's when times actually come, when true crisis comes and hits us, as he talks about an abdominal pain that threatens a serious disease, or maybe it's a headline newspaper that threatens all of us with destruction, that suddenly everything tumbles down. And as he suggests here, that there we start finding where we need to be once again, we get grounded once again in the grace of God, and that we become sort of consciously dependent on God during that time, drawing near to him for strength that we need each and every day that that's the right source we go to for that strength. But see, what happens is, is we sometimes only go there during times of crisis, but what God calls us to is to trust him more and more each and every day. And what we need to do as well is to recognize that because of our world is broken, that we will always have opportunities to give up and give in, to just throw in the towel, to let our attitude run away with the worst case scenarios that are all around us. But the only true thing that can transform us is running to who God is and what he has done for us. And knowing, as C.S. Lewis said, that that is where we find our strength. That the Lord delivers his people amid suffering and disappointment. And that no matter what troubles assail you, no matter what troubles you face, trust in God. He has delivered you already. Remember what he has done through Jesus Christ. You are saved, you are forgiven, and you have eternal life. Command all your cares to him in prayer and rejoice and praise in his surpassing mercy through this holy child, Jesus Christ, who was given to us, our Savior, who delivers us from sin, death, and the devil because of what he has done for us. And so today, all we can do is praise God. Praise him because of what he has done for us. And the question is, how is your praise life these days? Are you being shaped by God's promises, or have you given in to the ways of the world that is all around you? Our lives are a part of God's bigger story. God is working goodness and grace in the midst of the brokenness of this world. And what else can we do but praise him for what he has already done for you and I? 
See, what I hope is that starting today, you will find words of praise to praise God with, that you will celebrate all that God is doing, and that as you approach Christmas Eve, as we come together for our worship service, whether it's in person or it's online, that you will worship and praise God more than ever because of all that he has done for us. And sometimes the crisis that we're going through, the struggles of 2020, can bring us closer to God than we've ever been because we are relying on him for the strength and the promises that he has given us. And so today, as we move forward, the lesson for today and for this week on how you live this out is I would love you to take a few moments this week and begin your morning with praise of God, especially as we approach Christmas. Don't ask for anything. Don't pray for anything that you think you need or anyone else needs just for a little bit but just simply praise God in the, in the morning. Praise God for who he is and for the promises that he has fulfilled. And join us. Join us on Christmas Eve because we all need a stable Christmas. Again, join us either in person, outdoor worship at 6 p.m. on Christmas Eve, or you can join us online as well. We will have that available at 6 p.m. as well. And whatever you feel comfortable is fine. But let's find a way to have joy around this time, knowing that the crisis all around us is not the full picture, that God is doing an amazing work. So I invite you to join me in prayer. Well, dear Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for all that you're doing. And we thank you for this message today. That Lord, as we look around us, we can see all kinds of things that, that distract us and take us away from knowing that you are the one we need strength from, Lord. That, Lord, at times we just don't see the full picture. We only look at what's right here in front of us. But, Lord, help us to have eyes and ears and hearts and a spirit, Lord, that sees more. To know that, Lord, you are more active than the things we see right now. That, Lord, you, we are just part of this big story that you are creating. And that, Lord, truly, there is so much available because you are doing so much in this world. Let us trust in you more and more. Give us a, the spirit in us today to be curious more and more. But Lord, help us to reach out to you so that, Lord, each and every day we can rely on you more and more. So, Lord, we just say thank you today for Jesus. Thank you for all that we're doing. And, Lord, bring joy and peace in our lives during this Christmas celebration. We pray this all in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Well, guys, take care. God bless. And I look forward to seeing you at Christmas. So from now on, God bless you. Take care. Bye.